Yes! Hey guys, this is a really difficult situation to watch and an easy one to push blame in. But for people who aren't in the aeronautical community, uh, this P-63 is notorious for having horrible visibility out of the cockpit. That pilot, even though it may look like it from some angles, had very, very little opportunity to spot the bomber that he crashed into. Um, just a really sad situation. It doesn't look like anybody was able to make it out. So prayers for all the family. And I'm glad that no one ended up being hurt on the ground. Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises on and glory to Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Hashem, Rekakwadash. All blessings, honor, glory, and power be unto the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh Shai. And double honors to the apostles and the elder bishops, the great millstone who taught me his truth. And salutations to the elect scattered brought throughout the four corners of the earth. My name is Amon Gabar, back with another quick lesson, Lord Williams, edifying straight to the point. And these are these are the vehicles that's expected to fight Yahweh Shai when, they, when he comes back. This is the Dallas Air Show that happened. Um, I believe this was yesterday, yesterday morning. This was um, this is very new in the news. And disclaimer: this is you know for informational purposes only. You know clearly this is from another person's YouTube handle. But what you see, it, it actually happened. And it's real, it's not CGI. Two air two uh military aircrafts. I believe they were they, they some throwback World War II joints. But nonetheless, Esau does have more advanced technology. But this is what he's getting ready to use to fight against our power, fight against the one that created him, fight against the one that gave him the technology to even take off into the air and to and take flight. You know? This is what this is what these devils are expecting. To use against the Lord Of course You know More advanced ones But nonetheless They're all flesh Alright They're all flesh Alright And this is the article Right here Um Two planes collide At Dallas air show Six dead After two plane crash Mid flight During air show In Dallas County judge Six killed In collision Between World War Two plane At wing Over Dallas air show a pair of vintage military aircraft collided at a Texas air show. Here's the latest developments. And that's just a sign that you saw you, you don't stand a fighting chance against the Lord because this is supposed to be a pride and joy. You flaunting your military, you know, technology. You're parading yourself in the air. But then, boom, the Lord brings you down. How much more when it's time to fight against the Lord, man? It is you crashing into your own, your own peoples, your own, you know, um... Your own fellow aircrafts and all that. But you expect to fight Yahweh Shah when you come back? That's impossible. And it's laughable. You know, that they really think they're gonna fight against the Lord when he comes back. You know? Not a, not a fighting chance in the world. The Lord's gonna play around with these devils at first. You know, he's gonna play around with them. I got um Isaiah 31, and I'll start at verse 3. Matter of fact, I could jump straight to the point. It says now the Egyptians are men and not God. All right, the Egyptians, talking about the modern day Egyptian, which is the Americans. All right, Esau, Edom. All right, the Egyptians are men and not God. The, Esau is the modern day Pharaoh. The, the top elites, they're the modern day Pharaoh. Your presence would be like the modern day Pharaohs, the rulers. So now the Egyptians are men and not God. They're just, they're just men, they're flesh, they're carnal. All right, they they're created, they bleed just like us. It says, and their horse is flesh. The horses represents their power. All right, their horses represents their power, their chariots, their planes, their fighter jets, their crafts. All it is is flesh, and not spirit. It's not spirit. What spirit is the chariots? They, you you never see no, or hear about a chariot crashing. That's impossible. All right, the chariots of Yahweh from Yahshua. Are his own his holy angels driving those vehicles or riding those vehicles and their spiritual vehicles, you know, that can do that can defy gravity, defy space and time, defy anything you can possibly think of. Alright? They don't work the way our understanding works. Okay, so they're not spirit. Esau's crash, you gotta control it, you gotta you gotta turn it on, you gotta make make a left, go up, go down, elevate. You know, escalate, de-elevate, you know, all that. 
you know, maneuver around, avoid crashes. Not the chariots, man. You know, but then again, this is what Esau is getting ready to use to fight against our Lord, our power, and his holy angels. So the Egyptians are men and not God, not powers, and their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, his power, right? The Lord Yahweh by Shemesh, how are you going to stretch his hand out? His hand represents power. When he sends his son back, that's him stretching his hand out, and it's not going to be beautiful. Both he that helps shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they shall all, they all shall fall down together. So when the Lord is getting, the Heavenly Father is getting ready to stretch out his hand against Egypt, and anybody that's partaking in trying to come up against the Lord, going to fall. All right, we got an example of that here in, um, here in the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 13 and verse 9 it says and lo matter of fact I could read up this is the this is the Lord um I'm gonna read through it 2nd Ezra 13 and, and 1 and it came to pass after seven days I dreamed a dream by night and lo there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof and I beheld and lo that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven and when he turned his countenance to look all the things trembled that were seen that were that were seen under him. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice. Like as the earth faileth when it fleeth filleth the fire. It's talking about our Lord. That's the man that waxed strong with thousands of heaven, the angels when he come back. You know, he, he what does he come back to do? Isaiah 66 and 15, the Lord will come with his chariots with fire and his chariots like a whirlwind. Alright, and after this I beheld and lo, they gathered together. A multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. So the Esau's military and these other nations, they're going to come together in alliance to try to fight against Yahweh when he comes back with them chariots. And what are they going to be using? Are they fighter jets, military jets? They're going to they pull out all their cards. Every last one of their cards, they're going to pull out. All right. But behold, but I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. That's the chariot. But I would have seen the region or the place where out the hill was graven, and I could not, because it was not a it was not a mountain, it was a chariot. And after this I beheld and lo, all they were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, and yet thirst fight. So they're gonna be terribly afraid, but they they still gonna fight because the Lord is gonna harden their hearts to go on and continue to try to fight up against them. Alright? And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came. You know, the Lord seen the violence of the multitude that came. They rode, they, they're flying through with their fighter jets, loud noises, shooting missiles, rockets, and just whatever. You're going to see the violence with them coming all together in the alliance. And then he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war. Remember the Lord standing on that chariot, riding on that chariot. He ain't going to lift up no sword, no nothing, you know, and, and no, throw no punch. What is he going to do? But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as there had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath. And out of his tongue, he cast out spark and tempest. And that's going to be the Lord shooting in fire from them laser beams, as you see. Or shooting the laser beams from the chariots, as you see in movies. We think you saw get it from the, the ID4 Independence Day. The scene when the chariot went over the building and just opened up. And then a large blast of fire then came and shot out and everything turned to dust. Where do you think they got that from? That's the Lord coming back. And that's how he's going to deal with those that are wicked. Those that are going to try to fight up against them. And they were all mixed together to blast the fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and burn them up, everyone, so that upon a sudden of innumerable multitude there was nothing to be perceived, but only the dust, only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. So Ezra was seeing like a whole hologram type of scenario, and he's seeing the prelude to what's going to happen Right before World War Three, before the nukes is dropped, um, then the nation gonna try to fight against Yahweh Shah. You know, they gonna be coming with their little jets, the little fighter jets, the new advanced ones that we don't even know about. But it's still flesh, all right. It's still flesh, and they don't stand a fighting chance in the world. So, our power is greater than them. Hey, that's what um, Elisha told his servant that they that be with us are more than them that are against us. And he was referring to the chariots of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So, with that, I'm going to give all praises on and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Bashem Rakaq Padash. Little ones was quick, edifying, strain to the point. Esau, you don't stand a chance. Shalom to the elect.